a professional record of three wins, five losses, and no draws, hailing from Thailand, this is Jatsada Manatajim! And his opponent, fighting out of the right corner with a perfect record of 12 wins, no losses, and no draws, hailing from Pakistan. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to bout number nine in the Wildweight division. This is scheduled for six rounds. Returning fighters of the show, Usman Wazir taking on Jatsala Manapchai Jim. Thank you for joining us, folks. We have got a classic. Pakistan taking on Thailand once again for this afternoon of fight. And we've just seen the bell for round number one. Of course, scheduled for six. Will it go that long? We will see. One of the most impressive tan lines I've seen so far on Usman Wazir. Definitely enjoying his time in the sun here in Thailand. Let's see if he's going to enjoy his time in the ring as well, Jimmy. All right, a nice start as well from Usman. I've seen Usman fight before. He likes to get on the inside and start winging shots and digging down deep. Every shot he throws has mean intentions. He doesn't throw a pit about her. He throws mean shots. Yeah, Usman undefeated as a pro. Quite an established amateur as well. Won the WBC title as an amateur. Usman doing a very good job of now just bullying Jatsada into the corner. Jatsada, we've seen many times, he can take a shot. But I think Usman's power in this fight is definitely going to be the deciding factor as he just marches him down. He's already got him against the ropes. He's already got him against the corner alley. So the range is not an issue for Usman right now. Usman missing with the overhand right. But that jab of Isman, once he gets a good flow of it, he can really start to pick his opponent apart and find that their weaknesses and just find his timing for power shots like his hook to the body and the head. Jatsada representing Saramon Coles, Jim, so we know they can go to the body, they can get down low, and they can last and weather a storm. However, can you survive the storm of Usman Wazir? I'm not sure. Beautiful turning, a very old veteran move by Wazir. Yeah, let's hopefully we can see a bit more of that from Wazir because it's always you get hit by the punches that you can't see and footwork wise you want to step around like that to try and land strong punches and a knockdown there, no, not a knockdown, a slip there ruled by the referee. And I think Jatsada thought it was a knockdown. Look at the feints by Wazir as well. Wazir just pulling out all the stops, pulling out all the veteran moves. He's trying to bait his opponent to bring his guard down before he sends that left hook upstairs. Wazir taking two punches and landing his left hook twice to the body, and that really did shook. Jatsadar on the back foot, jabs the body there from Jatsadar, an overhand right as well on the outside. Jatsadar trying to fend Wazir off with his jab. As Wazir is doing right now, like the classic Elvis, he's all shook up, and that was a beautiful left hand. Wazir, I think, is now biding his time. I think he's found his weakness in his opponent. I think he's going to come alive in that second round, maybe the third, and really take Jatsadar out. A bit of hesitation here from these two. And the clapper goes for the final seconds of round one. It's been a bit of a standoff between these two. Uppercut there from Wazir to end the round. Good flurry from the Pakistani fighter. A lead uppercut is usually a lost punch in boxing because it's such a risky uppercut. So that is just a demonstration of the timing of Wazir. Very nicely done. And see some action replays. There was that clipping left hook. 
Wazir, to me, is just boxing perfect right now. He's not taking much damage. He's landing powerful shots, and he's already herding Jack Sadar into the corner. So like a sheepdog does with sheep, they get him into the corner, they get him where they need to be, and that's exactly what Wazir has done. Wazir has already cut off the ring, he's found his timing, and I think he's going to end this fight with a beautiful left hook. And he definitely did get rounded up there. Jack Sadar, let's see if he can angle off as much as possible against Wazir. And you can see Wazir definitely got the Highland Boxing Gym team in his corner. Manapachai Gym in the other corner. So it's definitely a battle of the two big gyms here in Thailand. And that is the bell alley. We're going into a second round. I think we might see it finish here. And here we go, jab there from Wazir to start the round off. Jack Sadar trying to edge forward, fainting him, but then backing off at the same time. Wazir now flicking that jab, beautiful head movement. Jack Sadar goes for the old school clinch of just putting your opponent in a headlock. And a beautiful right hand by Jack Sadar, sorry, Wazir. My apologies. Wazir has landed everything clean, everything is set up perfectly. He is chiseled out of marble. Yeah, clubbing punch is being delivered now by Wazir, who holds the center of the ring. Jack Sadar trying to fly away at him with his jab, but not having a lot of success. You can see Jack Sadar has a wider stance. He has broader shoulders. He should use that to his advantage. Jab, step in, throw the right hand. Or like a Banan Hopkins, throw your uppercuts and grab your opponent. This is exactly where he needs to be, exactly as I said. Throw the shot and get on the inside and get away from danger. But Jack Sadar is not coming alive enough, and I think that body shot just hurt him. And you see Wazir just waiting patiently, having a high guard and taking a couple of Jack Sadar's punches and then landing a power punch of his own. Left it to the head or to the body. It's up to Wazir what he wants to throw. I think you're absolutely right. I think Wazir is in control of this, and it's up to him on how he wants it to end at this stage. He's got... Jack Sadar under his spell, he's got him where he wants to be, and I think it's just a matter of time. Beautiful shot and a nice right hand upstairs as well to follow. The Perth fighters are now in the center of the ring. Perth fighters holding position. And Wazir just looks incredibly calm, doesn't want to engage too much of anything other than just big powerful shots. Push away here from Jack Sadar as he throws the jab, uppercut down the middle from Jack Sadar as well. Jack Sadar just holding a high guard, shrinking his level down a bit, so did Wazir. Looks like both these two want to have a fight in the phone booth, where you should see the punches fly soon. And that's exactly what Jack Sadar should be doing, giving Wazir something to worry about. But Jack Sadar is just taking more shots than he needs to, and he goes to the canvas once again. The referee calls it a slip, but we see this a lot with Jack Sadar. He hits the canvas a lot with slips, but it's also a good way to get your breath back if you need it. A nice left hook as well, landed by Wazir. Wazir, huge clubbing left hook there, land by Wazir, as Jack Sadar ties him up inside the clinch. Dying seconds of the round. Wazir with another flurry to the body and to the head. Like I said, Jack Sadar can weather a storm. He knows how to take big shots, and that's exactly what we're seeing now. And he eats a right hand, and then he goes to the canvas once again. Like I said, Jack Sadar seems to end up on the canvas in the most unusual ways. Dying seconds again of round number two. And that's the end of round two. A very aggressive ending to that which was a very interesting round between two fighters. Well, one that's definitely got their firm footing there, but the other really struggling. What did you make of it, Jim? I, I thought it was a beautiful round again for Wazir. He looks very much in control. Every shot he's throwing is very methodical. He's very much in control of where he wants his opponent to be. Jat Sadar did have moments where he started firing back. He gave Wazir something to worry about, but I think this is Wazir just biding his time and choosing when he wants to end it. I said he would end it in the second or the third. We're going to see right towards the end of that round, though, we saw Jack Sadat eat some of the most vicious left hooks I've ever seen. We're going into another round in just a moment. We're already about to get halfway through this. I, I would like to see Wazir, rather than just playing with his food, so to speak, just try and take it now, try and finish the fight whilst he can. Jack Sadar can take a shot, but Jack Sadar is already looking for ways out. Yeah, Wazir definitely packing the power. 
out of these two. High guard from Wazir as he goes head hunting in on the inside, in the pocket. Looks like this is going to be Rock'em Sock and Robots, Jimmy, to start round three. Yeah, Robot Wars, exactly what I was thinking of as well. Some beautiful left hooks and right hooks. And we see again, Wazir throws some very methodical, but Jat Sadar goes to the canvas. He does this every time, but it's a veteran move. You're taking a breath, but I'd like to see the referee start to either warn or take a point away from Jat Sadar because he's just slowing down the action by jumping to the floor. Uppercuts and a hook to the body there. And Jackson are down and the referee not letting him get back up. That's a stoppage by the referees. Seen enough. Jackson are took it too much damage for the referees liking. And it looks like was, my crystal ball was right, Ali. It was that third round and it was a left hook that finished the show. Yeah, Jim, your crystal ball is definitely working overtime today. And there you go, Wazir. Advancing to 13 and 0 now, and this is how he did it on the inside, right there, with the uppercut to the head starting it and the hook to the body finishing it. That is and ladies and gentlemen, you go in there with 43 seconds left in round number three by knockout.